Hi guys, my name is Borro Dante and welcome back to Overpain. Today's patient is Austin Baruby. Probably, that's how you pronounce that. And they're a character with the wolf head and oh my god, that is a giant neck though. Is that the guy from Cannibal Corpse wearing a wolf mask? Like, I, I wonder what's behind the decision to make the neck like that. Or maybe it's a scarf, right? Yeah. How about that confusion? Hey Borodante, hey Austin, love watching and learning from your overpain episodes, I mostly draw anthro portraits, such as this one. One main problem I've been having is adding texture. Ah, making it look more refined. When I try adding texture, it looks more flat. Here's an example of an image where it's too soft and too textured in many areas. Thanks again for this opportunity. Too soft and too textured. Well, yeah, when you try to add more texture, it looks flat. This is the perfect result of using textures as in the digital term of using textures. Honestly, it's been kind of a while since the last time I saw any picture that would really benefit from applying actual brush texture to simulate the actual quality of the surface that is being painted. Whenever I see it, it's always like it would look much better if you would go somewhat other way. Especially with the art style like this, like this is not some dull hyper-realistic concept art. This is a picture that is meant to bring Bring the character to life. It's expressive, it's colorful, it's about the juice in everything. So the texture is just not gonna work in that sense. You gotta work with the texture the way traditional artists work with the texture. Like, look at the reference of what any kind of wolf would look like. I know that's not the point of making this picture realistic, but maybe it is, since this artwork is on this channel, right? Like, look at this, look at the way fur goes around the character, and try to imagine what kind of texture of a brush would help you with that. It's just not gonna work. What you really gotta do is using the traditional, actual, artistic texture. The texture that is achieved with the brush work, not the brush settings. To prove a point, I'll turn off the pattern at all. So right now, my brush is simply this. Like, super smooth, barely any definition at all, just you kind of can see the direction of the stroke and that's it. But first, a little bit on the lighting and overall the choice of colors maybe. Like, I can see, which is really cool, I can see that you've been working with the actual direction of the light, so I can definitely tell that the light is hitting the character from the top. Like, this is a perfect example, like, light is hitting like that, this is where it's casting some shadow on the head and in here as well as going downwards so this is a really well done lighting from the top but I would recommend in this sense to make the lighting a little bit like that not just from the top from the front top like if this would be in the movie or if I would be setting up lighting in the studio to start recording, this I would say like this was a bad lighting in a way that I should choose different angle. It's all realistic and well done, but it's just a bad choice of angle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move the light source a bit to the front. This will make eyes much brighter. So we'll actually see the character better, they will actually be here. And the places I am gonna apply shadows at are over there. That's where the light will stop getting caught with the surface. I'm gonna make a little bit of a fold like this to kind of identify the scarf as a scarf. Because before that it was such a perfect cylinder, I couldn't tell at all that that was a scarf. It felt like a gigantic alpha neck, like what the hell. So right now as I'm going with this like big brush strokes, just identifying lighting and identifying a little bit of a more precise geometry in a way like for instance with the scarf, right? I made its shape a bit more defined. It's not just a smooth, vague cylindrical shape, it's more specific. We have a fold, we see what kind of material it is exactly. Hmm, 
I kind of like the idea of keeping this main torso part, like the shoulders, the rib cage, pretty much as simple as it looks right now. Maybe I'll add a little hint on the armpits, but overall, there's something to it, like it looks kind of cool as a style that he's so simple. So right now I use the simple brush and I'm getting these brush strokes right here that are overlapping each other here and there and you can see there's like certain touch to the surface even though I wasn't trying at all to like really define the surface or its qualities it's already it doesn't feel blank why digital artists use some kind of textures with their brush because they want to avoid surfaces looking blank and thing is, if you do the brush work correctly, if you're searching for the surfaces correctly, if you're defining real lighting, not a single place on any surface will look blank. Simply because these brush strokes, they will define your intent to define the surface and it will bring all the meaning you will ever need. How about that? I added like this piece of hair right here. It's like sticking out and casting a little shadow on this yellow bit underneath. It's looking a bit nicer right there. Like I can see a very aggressive application of texture in this area. That's a good indicator. These thingies right here that looked so specific and sharp and easy to visualize at the edge on the contour side. But how to do it here? How to go about this place? Let's just look at a real wolf right here and try to repeat what we see. So I'll be fixing that lighting, the bottom part is still lit up from the top completely, so I'm gonna be adding more light at the bottom part, while also introducing the actual more of a detailed shape to the fur, and we'll see how that artistic texture will turn out. I'm thinking it's a good idea to change the color of the background. Just because the character has a lot of yellow stuff, especially the scarf, and the background is yellow, it's much better to use some kind of complementary color so everything would just play together much more interestingly. Okay, I found a bit of a better fitting reference right here. Like on one hand it's better, because just the face's shapes are much closer to what we have here, but in Zootopia they have like no big fur on anybody. Any 3D cartoon they have like super simplified shapes and fur is just for texture and that's it. But in this case we need to take into account that we have these big spikes of fur as a silhouette, defining the whole character everywhere, so I need to continue. The texture should inherit this. Same as texture inside of the cheek on Zootopian characters is continuing the shape of the spikes of the fur on the contour as well. So it all looks like in harmony with each other. So in this case I have to do the same thing. Oh yeah, and let's decrease the shadow at the top part of the eyeballs so the character would look a bit more excited because in the original he's like, all right, I'm here, can I go now? Or, I don't know, <laughs> feels a bit different, you know, and this way he kind of makes more sense a little bit. 
Not necessary, of course. You can have all kinds of expressions and characters. For instance, on the nose, right now I'm creating a bit more definition of the shape of it, trying to figure out the geometry a bit better because it seems a bit off. And as I'm defining the shape, keeping in mind the environment, the lighting, and just trying to find the right shape, I end up creating that texture simply because I'm using the semi-transparent brush and I keep searching and searching and covering and searching. And in the end, when I find a good value for a spot, this is the texture that I'm getting in the end, simply by applying this semi-transparent brushwork. And it's a beautiful dance of different colors, different values that creates that interesting definition to the surface. Even if it makes little sense as the actual geometry, as actual detail that would be perfect for the object, it's still a beautiful artistic abstraction which is what the texture is pretty much and applying the texture from the digital brush itself like these rough photo textures or whatever it is like these really hard grungy textures it just almost never works simply because the texture of a brush faces you directly like this but almost nothing that you paint faces directly at you like that Everything has like an angle and if you want to apply texture to this square right here, the texture needs to be like facing there. So instead of being some kind of texture like this, it needs to be a texture that would be going like that. So everything needs to distort and rotate in respect to the geometry, to the angle of the surface. And that's why applying just a flat texture of a brush to the artwork will always look flat, which is exactly the problem Austin was having with this artwork. A good example for the application of just the texture is the background right now. I will never be using like a smooth soft brush, even if I apply like texture to it. To explain what I mean, like here's the soft brush, but I don't want it to be that smooth and just perfect, so I'll apply a texture to it. So now it's a soft brush with the texture on top. This is horrible. Don't do that. Pretty much it's a good idea to only use a texture if you want to simulate the quality of the canvas. Because only the canvas texture makes sense when it's just facing you always. Like it sort of looks flat when you apply it, but it also makes sense and brings a certain vibe of uh, traditional artwork. And just an interesting definition that makes nothing to do with the details of the object, but more giving certain quality to the surface of the canvas that would be pleasing to the eye just because it has a lot of detail to it. The detail of just the surface of the canvas, not the subject of the painting, which is important to distinguish. But of course, not everything is obligated to be painted on something that looks like a canvas. So you may choose some other texture, but never rely on it to add definition to the surfaces that you're trying to paint. It will always work against you, it's not gonna work out at all. 
And on the background, this is what I'm doing. Like, instead of using the soft brush, I'll be using this super sharp brush, but very transparently. And I'll be searching for shapes that I want to show for the background. Like, whatever looks nice to support the character. I'll add a little bit of a colder, deeper, almost cyan, but not really. So it would play a bit with uh, different colors, not only green and almost yellow green I have around here as well so there would be certain color abstraction going on as well and as i'm pushing these shapes back and forth back and forth i'm getting my texture because really this is what you need not just some perfect photo image distorting the brush strokes on top of everything you want just the painting to look like this like there was certain amount of thought put to every bit of your image. Everything was thought through, painted with precision and just certain touch to everything. And smooth brush will never give you that. so this is what I got this is probably gonna be the end result well yeah like in comparison you can see how I don't know maybe this is not what this art style would really benefit from so I, I'm a bit foreign to this maybe I went a bit too hardcore on the fur but at the same time how are you going to make it not that harsh when the outlines of the fur are so spiky like crazy big but I mean we could make make it a bit softer close to the mouth right because that's what animals have tone down my brushwork and make things look just softer closer to the smooth surface and even from that you will be getting that very precious texture that will actually be working in respect with what kind of surface this is because in the original like this texture it's the texture of cement or something like that, like concrete wall, and it's applied to the furry cheek of a wolf. Of course, it's not gonna work for many reasons. So I made the spikes a bit softer and also applying a little bit of a gradient in here to show this roundness of the shape, which is what you get to do when the fur is a bit shorter, smaller, not as crazy. So anyway, these are my ideas. I don't know, it feels a little bit like I'm very distant from the immediate goals that Austin has in their artistic path. So maybe it wasn't exactly relevant, but I don't know, I see this kind of approach as the correct way to develop this kind of art style. So yeah, there we go. I hope this was helpful and yeah, good luck to you, Anthony. This is a pretty cool artwork. Initially, I love the fact that you are really working with lighting. I can see this happening and this is cool. This is like the best part of this artwork, this uh, definition of light. It looks really cool. So I hope you'll figure out your thing with the textures or the brushwork. If any of you guys want to submit your picture for Overpaint, the link to my patreon pages in the end of this video you become my patron in overpaint tier submit the picture with the description i read the description and overpaint the picture but for now i thank you for watching if you did i guess you did if you're here leave a like and subscribe tell a friend forget about textures do whatever you want and i will see you in the next one bye this wolf seems like such a nice guy he's probably great to hang out with this is what this art style is all about, creating nice entities, whoever they are. <laughs> I don't know.